Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind the scenes science collections and research at Chicago's Field Museum. Environmental change is a process that in geological terms is occurring all the time. The environment we live in is not static. You could think of time as having two different types. There's ecologic time, uh, which we can observe. Geologic time goes far beyond any kind of memory or even record keeping that humans have. Talking about millions of years ago, Uh, my name is Philip Heck. I'm the Robert A. Pritzker Assistant Curator for Meteoritics and Polar Studies. About three billion years before the start of the solar system, there was a starburst event. Many more stars form than normal, and at the end of their life, after three billion years, they form dust. Pre-solar grains, they are the oldest solid matter that we can analyze in the lab older than 4.6 billion years. These minerals are older than anything in the solar system. And then they were incorporated into solar system objects. All the material that we are made of, that Earth is made of, these elements were made in stars. So my name is Melanie Hopkins, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the geology department. I work on the early evolution of animals. The period of time that I'm looking at is the Cambrian. Uh, it started around 542 million years ago and lasted until 488 million years ago. I work on a group of organisms called trilobites, and they were some of the first animals that ever evolved. And most of the field work that I do is out in Nevada and Utah. And at this time, North America was rotated about 90 degrees relative to its present position and situated on the equator. So Nevada and Utah were tropical environments. And sea level was high enough that a lot of the continent was flooded, so Nevada and Utah were also underwater. So all of the organisms that I'm looking at were alive in the ocean, sort of running around on sand and mud that would eventually become the shales and limestones that we find the fossils in. My name's Ian Glasspool. I'm the Paleobotany Collection Manager and I've been at the Field Museum now for approximately seven years. I study environments from about 420 through to about 250 million years ago, mainly those environments preserving fire and in particular fire in coal forming environments. So the fossil record and the rock record, the geological record, is the history of the earth preserved in terms of the rock sequences that we see around us. Plants are another fantastic tool for looking at the climate in the past. When we find plants in the fossil record, we can extrapolate from what we know about the modern world to the past. Plants in a rainforest look very different from those we might expect at high latitudes. If you compare, say for example, Illinois 300 million years ago to the present, it's a very different world. At the time we were situated slightly north of the equator. So it was a tropical, ever wet swamp environment, quite different from the world we live in today. My name is Lance Grandy, and I am currently the uh, Head of Collections and Research here at the Field Museum, but I am also a curator in the Geology Department. Well, another one of my favorite uh, research projects is looking at probably the world's most productive freshwater fossil locality in southwestern Wyoming in the Green River Formation. Uh, it's a 52 million year old lake bed that I work in every summer and it's just an absolutely amazing locality. You have everything there from fossilized bacteria to 13-foot crocodiles and palm fronds, birds, but the locality is probably most famous for the fish fossils.
If you go out to this region today, it's a high mountain desert. It's pretty barren and it starts to snow in about September. So the climate is totally different right now than it was 52 million years ago. What we're finding when we look at the fossils is this was a subtropical environment, very wet, moist, with this huge lake surrounded by palm trees, volcanoes, and it was just such a different place. It's fascinating to be standing out there while it's snowing and look down and, and, and see a, a crocodile in the rock. I mean, that is, that's an experience to, to have. Well, change is definitely constant, I mean, as with everything and um, looking at the fossil record is a good way to see it. 52 million years ago, the planet was tropical in Wyoming. Um, today, it's a, it's a high mountain desert where w winter comes early. Um, things change all the time, but usually that change occurs over huge periods of time. Uh, I think as humans, we're accelerating that change right now, and that's what some people are worried about, that we may make these changes occur so fast and so suddenly that we won't be able to adjust to them and in the end that will have a, an adverse effect on humanity. I guess uh, one of the lessons is we can try and, and manipulate the environment and we can certainly try and be careful with it, but in the end there's no turning nature. Um, nature is a force that the environment doesn't care whether we're here or not. So it can change and will change and um, we just have to be careful that we don't push it in a way that um, wipes us off the planet.